Welcome back to Danjo Trains. Today I have a brand new design for the Orient Express, and this one has a working headlight. There will be three parts to this video. First, I'll cover what's new, and some quick testing to see how this version measures up to my previous design. Second, will be a section dedicated to some significant improvements to the gearing system, based on comments I received on YouTube and Rebrickable. If you're here, just to fix your double motor Orient Express, you can jump ahead with the timestamps. Finally, I'll cover a huge quality of life improvement I did to the wagons. So let's get started with what's new. Here you can see a close-up of the new design. The most obvious change is the working headlight, which uses a standard LEGO LED kit for powered up. Next, you'll notice around the headlight that the round 4x4 brick element is now grey instead of black. This was done to accommodate the LED light, since the grey brick has an open stud and this part does not yet exist in black. Of course, you could also drill a hole, but I did not want to traumatize anyone in this video with an illegal technique. Now let's take a look under the hood. The boiler is still designed to be easily removable. And here, you'll see right away, the trade-off for having the LED light is that there's only a single motor now. The differential has been replaced with a normal gear of the same size. Over here, this is the second LED light that is not seen when the train is assembled. I have it plugged into a pinhole just to secure it in place. Here's the front face, and with the grey, it kind of reminds me of the trains from Thomas the Tank Engine. Closing up the assembly is still very easy. You grab the mess of wires that comes out of the cab and gently pull, then the boiler will slide into place. And that's it for what's new. So the next question is, how much can this version pull compared to the double motor Orient Express? Let's give it a test. Here I won't use music, so you can really hear the sound of the train. Right now it's pulling the equivalent weight of 5 Orient Express cars. These are also R56 curves, wider than normal LEGO track. So far so good. Now, at this end of my layout, the track zigzags through a switch before the large curve. You'll see the Orient Express struggle a bit to pull the cars. It's worth noting that I'm running the train at 100% power here, but the batteries are not super fresh. And after a bit of a struggle, it manages to pull through. Now it's time to cover the changes to the gearing system. This is the double motor Orient Express that I have free instructions for on Rebrickable. You can check out the link in the description below. Now, if you like the double motor design better than the new one with the headlight, this section is still very important for you because we're going to fix a couple of problems that the previous design has. So I received a few comments concerning the gears and that they would sometimes make these awful grinding noises. Here I'm testing the train with no load, trying to make some noise. With the two motors at full throttle, there are no issues so far. But then I decide to run the train in reverse and listen carefully. It sounds more like a buzzing to me, but there shouldn't be a different sound in reverse like this. Also, to be fair, I never run this train backwards. So that means it's time to take the locomotive apart and see if we can fix the issue. Here's the belly of the train. I had a comment on Rebrickable that suggested that the yellow axle that holds this gear here could be the culprit because it only has one attachment point. You can see that, as I poke the gear, how the left end of the yellow axle is a bit loose. Let me do some quick modifications and see about adding a second attachment point here. Now I've added a 1x2 Technic brick in dark red. I've also replaced the yellow axle for a longer one. With two attachment points, this should be more secure. 
I try turning the axle, and everything appears to be smooth. Also, this is the new axle I use to hold the bottom gear. It's 4 studs long instead of 3 studs, and also has a stop at one end. And that covers one problem, but there's actually a second issue we need to fix. The second culprit, as it turns out, is the middle gear here, seen in dark grey. Here's the assembly that holds the middle gear. Now, the function of the middle gear is to transmit power from the large gear to the smaller gear that connects to the wheels. I was using this special gear that has a round hole for a pin instead of one for an axle. It's connected to this beige pin without friction ridges. I had this in my original design because I thought it would allow everything to turn more smoothly, but when I was still having issues reversing the train, I decided to replace it. This is the new assembly and it works flawlessly. It uses a gear and axle instead. My new Orient Express design has all of these improvements. But if you still want to use double motors, I highly recommend these changes as well. Now, there's one last topic I want to cover today. Magnets. I added magnets to all my Orient Express cars and it's been a huge quality of life improvement. I'll show you how to add them. You don't need any extra parts besides the magnet itself. First, remove the macaroni tiles, but don't lose them. We'll need them later. Next, remove the 2x2 round tile, and then the modified plate with the hole. You can pull off these assemblies next. Now, attach the magnetic coupler. You'll see that we have these two gaps, so we can fill them in with the extra parts. I remove these two pieces, and keep the brick and the round plate with the bar handle. They slide into the gap and blend right in. Then I do the same thing for the other side. We're almost done. Now we add the 2x2 round tile and the macaroni tiles back in place. Overall, it takes less than a minute to do, and you even get a few extra LEGO pieces after. There's one more improvement for the wagons that I already talked about in a previous video, but I want to bring it up again. I highly recommend to swap the train wheels for ones with metal axles. I find that it makes a huge difference, and that the wagons just glide on the tracks with the metal axles. And that's it for today. I really hope you like the new design. If I can make a comparison, think of it like the Mark V suitcase suit from Iron Man 2. More utility, but not as powerful as other suits. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, I find myself asking, where do I go from here? Do I try to make an even more powerful design that has two motors and a light? With Powered Up, I'm limited, so it would take power functions or some kind of special battery hub to pull it off. But. That's a video for another time. Bye for now.